before starting the lecture, I would like to show you uh, uh, the first results uh, that actually you are uh, having from the uh, extended Kalman filter. Because basically what I gave you during the exercise, uh, I mean for the exercise, uh, was uh, indeed uh, values uh, or, and results uh, for the Quest algorithm. So I gave you the quaternion of, uh, of the Quest algorithm. Uh, so basically, those represent the quaternion estimated, but should be pretty close to the quaternion uh, that represents our, two, our true solution. I gave you also these uh, uh, uncertainties uh, and uh, uh, errors given by the Quest algorithm. So those uh, should be very close to what you get. Uh, so some of you have problems, so we are going to see that separately. But the, I gave you a provocative results regarding the extended common filter. Because basically, if you have noticed, and a few of you, actually one of you uh, noticed, is that I gave you very small errors of the gyroscopes. But if you, in the results of the extended common filter that I show you, you don't have an improvement, but actually uh, uh, results that are uh, less accurate than the Quest algorithm. So I would expect that just uh, reading the, the exercise, some of you would have complained about that, but I understand that probably was uh, uh, very, uh, very tricky. But after the first results of the extended common filter, few of you uh, noticed that those results indeed uh, are a little bit suspicious because why we should have an increase in the errors of uh, of the attitude if the gyroscope errors are not so bad. And indeed, uh, what I gave you was uh, uh, a result that was obtained uh, uh, by scaling the matrix. So as I said, uh, the important thing of uh, the extended common filter is the tuning. If you change Q on R, uh, you basically change uh, the response of the Kalman filter. So what you have here as proposed solution is indeed one solution that you can get if you downweight the gyroscope measurements. So what you would expect, and I will post the solution since I, I was waiting for a, a few of you that were able to solve it, that the real solution should be very close to this one, especially after the lecture that we have done yesterday. So after showing you the uh, structure of Q, you should converge to this solution. So very small errors for the three components. Scusi, professore. Si vede lo schermo. Ah, scusate. Grazie. So what okay. I was saying, but okay, so the first part, uh, was already known because actually the um, you uh, you have the um, the errors from the the PDF that I uploaded on the web. So those you already know those results. Um, the one I was saying uh, are these one. So basically, the results that I gave you for extended comma filter was indeed that for trying to. Uh, let you uh, think about the tuning of the filter. So how was it possible that I was getting these uh, worse results with extended common filter, although the gyroscope errors were not so bad? So well, uh, the answer to this question that uh, will be, uh, I mean, my, my point was to address that uh, next week during the um, extra hour dedicated to the, uh, to the exercise is indeed that you are able, although you have good measurements of the gyroscope, you are able to the weight those observations and so have a, a solution that is even worse than the uh, Quest algorithm. If you adopt the metrics that I showed you yesterday, so a Q that is uh, directly related to sigma V and sigma U, what you get is indeed an improvement of the gyroscope measurement, of the uh, quaternion measurements, and so the angles that is very close to this one. As I said, I invite you to uh, change the Q matrix and see how 
the uh, response of your filter will change. So although you have a good measure from the gyroscopes, the tuning of the filter plays a very important role. So this was indeed a, a provo provocative result only to see how you were responding to this. And I mean, a few of you were able to, um, to catch the, 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 the problem. So uh, I will upload uh, the, this uh, figure here on the web, uh, so uh, on the website, so you will be able uh, to, uh, to match your results that uh, you were going to get, you're going to get with uh, uh, the uh, with the Q metrics that I gave you yesterday, and so you should be able to match this one. But as I said, uh, try to vary to scale uh, the Q metrics in order to see how the results can change. So next Monday we are going to see that in detail. But I'm glad that few of you were already able to do that by yourself. If you have any questions, uh, let me know during the break. So now we need to go back to the control theory, to control theory and especially to thrusters. As I said, I already uploaded the um, slides on uh, Google Classroom, so you should have everything. So yesterday we started to um, introduce uh, the um, thrusters and so the two different approach that we're going to uh, use in order to uh, correct the attitude of the spacecraft um, if we have a disturbance. So for example, if we have a constant disturbance, the on-off strategy is uh, indeed uh, good enough because basically when, the, um, when we have a disturbance, a constant disturbance that is acting on the spacecraft attitude, since the error that is given by the difference between the theta measured by the sensor and the theta desired is greater than zero, the thruster starts to um, fire. And so what you have is that you are applying uh, an instant or a very, uh, in a short time, uh, torque that is going to counteract the disturbance. This uh, control scheme, however, is not well suited if you want to uh, obtain a specific angle without any disturbance. For example, if you want to point a specific angle in uh, the your direction, as we have started to see yesterday. In that case, you, are not, you, 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 are, you need to have not only the possibility to have Umax positive when the error is indeed greater than zero, for example. So this is theta measured, you have theta desired. So if the, basically what you get is, the, if this is the attitude that you want to have, if the angle is positive, so the error is positive, but you're going to have a Umax in this direction. But since you need to, to gain a certain pointing, you need to have also possibility to uh, fire the thruster in the opposite direction to correct negative errors so when theta measurement so theta desired minus theta measurement is negative and so you need to have to uh, you you need to control the spacecraft in the two directions and also we emphasized that there is a, a specific uh, range of values of the angles that we are not able to uh, guarantee uh, through the um, maneuvers uh, uh, with the thrusters because, for example, are two small angles and since the uh, thrusters give you a very uh, short time but high impulse uh, uh, thrust and so a torque, you're not able to guarantee um, a very low accuracy attitude error. And that's the reason why you have these two values, E1 and E2, that 
are that basically are called the dead zone. So are the angles. So basically you have a theta desired plus minus, assuming that E1 and E2 are equal, this error. So you are able to get a value theta desired with this uncertainty, because basically you are not able to determine uh, the, uh, um, you are not able to uh, orient the spacecraft in that uh, specific range of angles. Anyway, these angles are usually small and are related to the uh, precision of your thrusters. Here we are assuming, for example, that we are not using electric thrusters, so electric propulsion. In that case, uh, you can indeed, uh, you will uh, have a different approach. Uh, here we are cons considering uh, thrusters they are going to uh, fire in pulse. So basically, uh, with an hydrazine uh, propulsion system that basically give you a torque, a maximum torque, uh, almost very close to uh, in a very short time. That's the reason why the first approach that we are going to see with the bang bang strategy is assuming that the torque. Um, is applied instantaneously and so the uh, function of time that we're going to consider first is uh, a Dirac delta. Okay, so we assume that at a certain time the fire, uh, the thruster is firing and apply a torque M at a specific time. So you are going to fire the thruster impulsively uh, at that specific time. For example, this should be, for example, T0 equal to zero, okay? But as I said, our goal here now is to use the thrusters not only, not to uh, counterbalance a disturbance, but we are, uh, for example, at a certain angle, so we are in the solar system, so we don't have any disturbance, any gravity gradient. So our dynamics is this one, ipc dot dot equal to zero. Very simple and straightforward. So we don't have any disturbance, but our goal now is to go from psi equal to zero to psi psi equal to psi final. And we want to do that in a certain time, Tf. The strategy that we are going to use is the bang bang. So bang bang is, uh, uh, is done by firing the thruster in one direction. So with a certain torque, for example, positive torque, if we want to reach a positive angle at time T zero. And we are going to provide an inverse, so a, a torque that will be minus m at time t final. To express that in, as a function of time, we are going to use the Dirac delta. Since the Dirac delta, as we said yesterday, has the units of one over second, in order to provide a torque on the right side of this equation, we need to consider M0 as a, a torque, so the units of a torque, for example, Newton per meter, times the time, so times the seconds. Okay, so the uh, by multiplying these uh, to the delta Dirac, uh, you get that M0 delta is indeed your M, okay? In, in terms of uh, units. Uh, probably, I don't know if all of you are familiar, so let me know if it is not clear. This expression here means that there is a delta uh, at time delta T, and uh, a delta uh, in the opposite direction and time t final. So basically the, this m and minus m is already 
included in this matrix here. So at time t equal to zero, the uh, fire uh, the thrusters are firing in uh, uh, with a positive torque m. At time t final is firing in the opposite direction. What we know, what we want to do here now is first of all try to see how the angular velocity of the spacecraft change over time and also the angle of the spacecraft change over time to reach our final goal. Secondly, we want to know the time that we need to, uh, to spend in order to reach that angle. So first of all, if we want to know the uh, angular velocity time variation and the angle uh, variation time, uh, time varying angle of the spacecraft, we need to integrate these two expressions. The first one is pretty straightforward because basically you can notice that since we have a delta Dirac, we need to uh, partition the integral in two different uh, uh, parts. So we will have a value for t between zero and t final and a different value for t greater than t final. So let's start with the, the first period here. So between zero, t zero and t final. During this period, the only delta Dirac that occurred is this one. So it is straightforward to know that by, uh, so if this is the, uh, so let me see if I'm able to do that here, okay. Let me erase this one so I have much more space. So it's basically uh, what you're going to have here is that psi dot is equal to the m0 divided by the moment of inertia along the o axis times the integral between zero, 0 and t of the uh, delta Dirac prime in the t prime because as I said in these uh, for uh, the time uh, between a zero and t final uh, this one is equal to zero and this one it is uh, uh, very easy to uh, compute because it is equal to one and so it is m zero divided by i z. If you want to do for t greater than t final, so c for t greater than t final, so also here there is a t. This one it is I am zero divided by i z between so t final and t of the other delta Dirac that now has a minus here t prime plus psi dot at time t final okay that it is exactly equal so this one we know from before that uh, at time t final, this one is equal to m zero divided by i z. So the first integral will be minus m zero i z. This one it will be m zero i z. And so the angular velocity of the spacecraft after the second fire will be equal to zero. So from the figure below, you can see indeed that the trend of the angular velocity is constant between zero and, so t zero and t final. And will be equal to zero after the second fire. So if we want to integrate this expression here, uh, you can see uh, indeed that this one will be a linear function because if you integrate uh, uh, this m0 iz over time, that will be indeed a linear expression. 
the second one is a little bit different because of course so you are integrating zero so that will be that the c time is equal to c a time t f plus the integral of zero so it will be indeed uh, it will be zero of course so basically this one will be directly the final value of the previous step so it will be m0 divided by i z t final okay and so we also determined the second important uh, physical properties of the of the spacecraft so the spacecraft will go linearly for the first period and will have a constant angle equal to our goal after the time tf okay so we uh, demonstrated easily that by uh, implementing the uh, thruster firing as impulsive maneuvers we are able to have a constant velocity during the two fires and a zero uh, angular velocity after the second fire and we were able to reach the angle the the other goal that i told you uh, in the beginning uh, was indeed uh, to determine what is the time that we need uh, to reach that angle so from the la last uh, um, from the last uh, uh, equation we computed the phi uh, psi sorry after t equal to t final but we have seen that is constant so basically this expression here gives us the expression of psi final so psi final will directly depends on the torque uh, uh, times the, the time divided by the uh, moment of inertia i z times the time uh, the final time and so from this one we can indeed compute t final since psi final is our goal is known this will depend on the moment of inertia of the spacecraft so lower is the moment of inertia lower will be the time because lower will be the resistance of the spacecraft to change its angular velocity its angular uh, momentum and uh, divided by uh, m0 so it means that if you are able to provide a larger impulse of uh, from uh, the thrusters lower will be the time so larger is m0 as uh, was pretty evident before even lower will be the, the time however this is a very simplified scheme in reality unfortunately the thrusters are not working really impulsive uh, with impulsive uh, firings but you're going to have uh, a different uh, um, a different behavior so there will be a short time at which you have uh, that the the thruster is firing and you have to take into account the time that in the next chart is called the tau so let me know if you have anything uh, from this uh, part. Otherwise, I'm going ahead with uh, the second uh, approach with thrusters. So the only difference comparing, uh, so the previous chart in which you had delta Dirac's delta for the uh, firing of the thrusters, now you have a finite time at which the thruster is firing. As I said, this time is called the tau. So now probably the uh, this uh, uh, expression seems to be much more compli complicated. Anyway, in order to determine the uh, this uh, sort of uh, step function, we are go we are going to use indeed uh, these so-called heavy side step step functions. Each uh, period in which you have uh, the firing of the thruster, you have to define two heavy side uh, step functions. What I mean is that 
one, so H T, the first AB side, means that at a certain time T zero, you're going to have a step function. At time H T minus tau, you're going to have So if this is a tau, you're going to have an opposite step function that basically subtract to that one, okay? So basically here, what you have will be, an, uh, will be something like that. So if you do ht minus ht minus tau, the only resultant will be indeed this box here. So this represents the first impulse that is not an impulse anymore, but it is with a finite time tau. And this is represent the second firing. So this is the first firing and this is the second firing. As I said, now, what we need to do is to uh, use this uh, uh, expression with every side step function. Okay. So uh, the other difference here is that now H is not a dimension, it's dimensionless. So in order to have the same M0 that we had before, since we know that M0 is a torque times time, we have to divide that by the characteristic time of our firing. So if we do M0 divided by tau, we get exactly M0. That is the M that we have seen here. Okay, so now the exercise is exactly the same. The only difference, so uh, I will try to uh, be, uh, I mean, to provide as many details as possible, although with the difficulties of writing on this slide. But the main goal here is exactly the same. So we want to define the, uh, how the uh, angular velocity of the spacecraft is going to vary over time, how the angle, of the spacecraft is going to vary as well. And we want to determine the time at, that we, we need uh, to reach uh, that final angle. And we're going to see that in real, in real cases, uh, by using this uh, expression, the time will not be as uh, the same that we have seen before. Okay, so those are the goals. In order to do that, we need to do uh, some mathematical uh, uh, transformation and computation, taking into account uh, the properties of the state function H. Okay, so as we have done uh, before, we need, uh, since uh, the first thing that we need to do is to integrate the expression of C dot dot, we need to integrate uh, over time uh, Psi, uh, in order to have a, a Psi dot so the angular velocity in the EO direction. Okay, so the problem here is that, uh, as we've done before, we need to discretize the integral in different regions. So we're going to do the integral in, uh, uh, during the first firing, the integral between the two firing, and notice that the, uh, uh, the, first fi the second firing will start at the final minus tau, Okay, because the final has to account also the uh, time of uh, your firing. So what we need to do here, so the first integral will be pretty straightforward because basically uh, we know that during uh, zero and uh, and the time uh, tau, this function will be exactly equal to one because these two will be equal to zero. 
because they, they basically give you this uh, value here. The difference between HT and HT minus tau was defined before, and it, all, it is only equal to one during zero and tau. So when you do that, so from T between zero and tau, you have directly that, um, so you have that psi dot time will be equal to the m0 that is m0 divided by tau so the lowercase m0 divided by moment, moment of inertia iz so this is the total uh, the torque the exact the torque that we are applying to the spacecraft uh, times uh, one because it is the integral of this expression between the zero and tau so this, since it is the integral between zero and tau, uh, zero and time, this will be a linear trend. So it means that from zero to tau, the uh, spacecraft, uh, so the thrusters are applying a constant torque and the angular velocity of the spacecraft is increasing linearly. So you have a linear acceleration, a constant acceleration uh, that gives us a linear trend of angular velocity up to uh, the time tau. At the time tau, so for c dot at time tau, this one will be equal to m0 divided by the moment of inertia times tau. Tau, as we said, is a constant. So at that time, the uh, torque is not acting anymore and so the we don't have an acceleration given by the thrusters and the spacecraft is going to stop uh, so sorry the, the, the acceleration is going to stop and the spacecraft is going to rotate with a constant and uniform angular velocity that is given by m0 divided by the moment of inertia times the time of our firing. So we will have a constant velocity of the spacecraft from tau to t final minus tau. The third, uh, the third uh, period that we have to integrate is indeed when the step function will be will provide a negative torque so a negative m0 so if uh, we want to integrate psi dot over time between uh, t final minus tau and t final there will be indeed the uh, integral between uh, t final. How can I, I can not write over there, but so it is uh, between <laughs> okay. So this is a t final minus tau. Probably I try to write over there and. Uh, and uh, time so this is uh, let me write here t final minus tau of the uh, this expression here because this one is uh, zero so the only expression is the second impulse maneuver so that will be indeed h minus uh, t minus t final minus uh, h t minus t final minus tau and we know that this expression in uh, in the integral it will be equal to one but we have to sum the angular velocity at time t final minus tau so we know that uh, at the uh, at that time, the angular velocity was indeed equal to, so this is psi at time t final minus tau. 
that from the previous step, we know it is equal to M0 divided by the moment of inertia times tau. This one will be indeed equal this uh, first integral so that will be so the first the second term now is is in front so we know that is m0 divided by iz times tau and the integral of that equation is a pretty straightforward because basically what we need to do is to um, so since uh, we know that this difference uh, it is negative you can uh, uh, directly uh, integrate m0. So here there is m0 divided by iz. Okay. So that will be minus m0 iz, the moment of inertia along the u axis, at times t. Uh, minus t final plus tau. So these two terms will be uh, cancel out. And so you have at the end that during the second fire, you will have a negative trend of the angular velocities from m0 uh, divided by iz times tau to zero. So the second fire will bring the velocity of the spacecraft, the angular velocity of the spacecraft to zero. So after the final, it is trivial to demonstrate that our uh, angular velocity will be equal to zero. Because if you substitute the final here, that will cancel out and will go to zero, okay? Any questions regarding these uh, passages? Ok. Professore, Prego. Il, quel meno nell'ultimo termine dell'integrale, non, non ho capito. Ok, di, questo meno qui? Sì, sì. Ok, so the, um, this integral here is h t prime minus t final so it is basically the integral in this of the second impulse but uh, this uh, impulse is that is basically reversed to this one so let me let me show you with uh, so here what you are doing is uh, basically uh, okay so what you are doing here is sorry. So this is h t minus t final minus tau. So basically, there is a minus here. So at time t final minus tau, you have this step function that is given by this term. Okay, and this is uh, basically h uh, t minus t final minus tau. This is the heavy side function, so this is minus that term. Okay, and you are summing a positive step function that will have a plus one, so it will be h t minus t final. If you do that one minus this one, so you sum these two f uh, function here, you get exactly this uh, step here. So this step here is negative uh, during this uh, time frame, uh, so between uh, t final minus tau and t final. And uh, you are able uh, Scusi, prego, prego. Riguardo a questa, questa domanda, non, non vorrei sbagliare, ma non dovrebbe esserci un più sul tau al, all'argomento eh, sotto al 2 quando, quando evidenziate i due termini 
uh, del, dell'equazione, non dovrebbe essere, cioè, perché quella, quella step function negativa stia prima di h di t meno tf, non dovrebbe esserci t meno tf più tau, piuttosto che meno tau? Più tau? Non sarebbe, non sarebbe traslata ancora di più verso destra se ci fosse il meno, il meno concorde con tf? No, è una mia curiosità. Ah, più tau, sì, penso di sì, ha ragione. Per essere rigorosamente corretti, sì, it should be t plus tau here. Ok? That represent this step function here. Questa era la domanda, giusto? Sì, sì, giusto, giusto. So, but main thing here is that we are trying to use a side step function to represent this uh, uh, grid here. So that means that during this period, this integral will be negative, so it will be minus m0 iz uh, the time. And that's the reason why there is a negative sign. So the negative sign is, uh, comes from the fact that we are firing in the opposite direction. Okay, grazie. Prego. Okay, so I don't want to go into further, so uh, I will leave you this uh, uh, computation, I mean, starting from the previous one, but I mean, it's really straightforward now, because basically what we need to do, we need to reintegrate the uh, spin rate in order to determine psi. So what you get here is that, uh, uh, so the first, uh, uh, so the trend, the first trend of the angular, uh, of, the, of the angle psi, it will be a parabolic term because basically you have that the, the angular velocity is increasing linearly over time. So if you do the integral of this expression, you get a t squared divided by two. Okay, so this one is pretty straightforward. The second term, so between the two fires, so between tau and t final minus tau, you need to consider the first, uh, the initial angle at the end of the first firing, so it will be m0 divided by two iz times tau squared, and this is the first term here. The second term is the integral of the spin rate during the time tau and t. This psi here is given by the previous expression that we have found, so it will be m0 iz times tau. So if you do the integral now, you have an expression over time, so the angular velocity is constant, but the angle will increase linearly. That's the reason why you will have m0 divided by iz times tau, because this is the first, the angular velocity at which it is moving during the time. And uh, uh, the uh, variation, the angular variation will be proportional to the time that is uh, passed. So between t minus tau. So if you combine these two terms, you get this linear expression here. The third period will be similar to the first firing. So during the second firing, what we are going to have indeed is that the angle will vary over time with the parabolic trend with an opposite, uh, uh, basically, uh, variation in the sense that basically now the uh, parabola uh, will try to uh, uh, what we are going to do is indeed to converge to the angle that is our goal. So what it means here is that for the, the third uh, period, what happens is that the first, the initial condition is given by the previous period. So you have to substitute to t, t final minus tau. The second term is the integral of the constant, uh, so the linear, uh, uh, the time uh, variation of the angular velocity over time. And so you have to do the integral of that expression. And so from a linear trend of the angular velocity, you're going to have a parabolic trend. So a quadratic term for the angle. And this is uh, the uh, final expression. So, I mean, it is always the same, uh, uh, the same 
principle. The only difference here is that now you need to um, combine all the, the formulation. And so you can verify that by combining the uh, angular velocity that we have found before, we are able to get uh, so um, a quadratic term for the first variation of the angle, a linear variation of the angle in during during the two fires uh, between the two fires, and during the second fire, you are going to have another quadratic term in order to converge to C final. You can see indeed uh, that after this uh, period here, the angle will converge directly to C final. And so if uh, at that expression here, you substitute the T final, this term will be canceled out. So for T, T equal to T final, this one will be equal to zero. Okay. And the only term that uh, remain is this one. So we found that the final angle will be a function of M0, the moment of inertia IG, times tau T final divided by uh, minus tau. Since we have defined uh, M0 as, uh, so M0 as uh, M0, so the upper, upper scale, uppercase at M0 times tau, we can uh, substitute uh, that one in this expression. So when we are not considering impulsive maneuvers, what you're going to see is that the C final will converge to M0 moment of inertia T final minus tau. Since our goal is to find T final, so let me write here. In case you don't, uh, you're not considering um, the uh, impulsive burns of of uh, of the of the man of the of the thrusters. Uh, well, T final will not be only proportional to the final angle times the moment of inertia divided by m zero. But you will have to add the duration of the thrusters maneuvers. So in the real case, the duration of the maneuvers matters in the timing that you need to determine the, uh, the that specific angle. So let's stop here. And uh, next, uh, uh, the next part will be indeed starting to use uh, uh, the final control system, uh, the final control actuators that we are going to see, that are the uh, reaction wheels. So let me know if you have any questions during the break.